Hi Pisces, how are you? My name is Lauren B. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. I have the Starseed Oracle for you this week. I pulled a couple cards. I also have the Oracle of Mystical Moments, which we might dip into a little bit later. I want to go through your downloads, what came through the channel for you and your Shufflemancy song, all of which were very interesting to me. First and foremost, when I stepped into your energy, I started feeling like I was having a lot of issues with my throat. <clears> throat> like having a difficult time like speaking the way that I wanted to which one it gives me the impression that you may be having a really challenging time right now speaking up for yourself especially in regards to what you deserve there's this feeling that you've been over giving that you've been over serving that maybe for some of you even people pleasing in hopes that at some point you were gonna give or contribute enough to make people realize that you are valuable and then match what you've invested. And it feels like you've been doing that for a really long time and it hasn't really been working out for you. It doesn't feel like you're in a moment of crisis right now necessarily, but it does feel like you consistently come up a little bit short. And it feels like it has to do with the principle of like the law of exchange. That when something is given, something is received. It's a law of transfer, right? It's this idea of fairness and equity. <clears throat> and when something is given without a proper exchange, then we have to consider that a gift. And in that shift of perspective, the question is, Pisces, how much have you been gifting and over gifting out into the world without ever speaking up about what you need or require in return? There's this idea of like closed mouths don't get fed. I remember very early on in my bartending career, I was very frustrated because I was working really hard and I wasn't getting like the shifts that I knew I deserved and like I was entitled to for the kind of employee I was and how much time I had been there. And I remember looking at the schedule one day in the kitchen and I got really upset. I started crying, very Piscean, right? But I just started crying. And one of the customers saw that I was upset and they had said, you know, Lauren, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And it shifted something in my brain because it made me realize that sometimes you have to speak up about what it is that you deserve. With this example, a lot of you, this might have to do with work. If you're a business owner, you might not be charging enough for your services. If you are a part of a company or a business, you might really be wanting to advocate for yourself and go to your employer and say, hey, like I really feel as though I deserve this promotion or I feel as though I'm entitled to a pay raise at this point for the amount of work that I've been doing and like, the quality of my skill set, etc., etc. For a lot of you, this might have to do with personal relationships as well, that you're people pleasing, that you're over giving, and people aren't really meeting you halfway. And in that, they're not living up to the law of exchange and the law of transfer, but neither are you because you're not self advocating. With the issue in this throat, the feeling here is that you actually want to say something, you want to make a shift, you want to advocate for what you're worth, but you feel really intimidated to do so because you don't think people will agree with you. Does that make sense? And what did they say? <sighs> it implies permission and, and validation that Pisces, when you won't speak up and advocate for what you know you deserve, because you feel like people won't agree with you, that is you subconsciously telling yourself that you require their permission, their agreement, or their validation that you are in fact valuable, which means that you're putting that decision and that definition in other people's hands before you allow yourself to come into agreement with it. And when it comes to your giftings, when it comes to your talents, when it comes to your love and what you invest out here in the big wide world, you have to know that it's valuable. You have to define that for yourself. If you don't believe it, no one else is going to believe it either. And I actually had a channeled message come through. And what it says is, why do you allow those with no eye for talent or heart for value determine your worth or the worth of your contributions? So there's this idea here of people that oftentimes they can't even hold a candle to you, Pisces, um, and you're allowing them to put out your fire, which brings us to our channeled song for this week, which is We Didn't Start the Fire by Billy Joel, which is a real bop time after time. And what they said is it's important for you, Pisces, to identify the subject of your ire. 
of your frustration because you may be looking around at friends or family or your boss or colleagues anything like that and feeling really frustrated that they're not valuing you they're not including you um in some aspect right you're not really getting um like a decent end of the stick but when we really dig down into it like the subject of the ire the subject of the frustration is that you don't feel valuable enough to speak up for your worth to self-advocate for your needs and so you're expecting perhaps maybe other people to recognize it for you first so that way you can confirm to yourself that you are valuable and you are worthy and you are worth you know your weight in salt does that make sense they're also bringing up systematic programming for a moment pisces it might benefit you to like zoom out for a moment and yes you may be an over giver an over nurturer um an over you know contributor but if we look at the world that we live in we are programmed systematically to consume and when we remember that we have the ability to pull some of that ire or that frustration off of the people places and things around us because we are trained from the time that we are little tiny little noodles to consume to take its consumerism its capitalism and oftentimes right we grow up with this idea of like hoarding and stockpiling thing it's like if bad weather is coming or if something is happening what's the first thing people do they go to the store they take everything off of the shelves and they bring it home right and so people will oftentimes they will do that with your love they will do that with the extra time and hours that you spend after work unpaid they will do that with your energy and they won't really think twice about it because they're programmed right just by existing in the western world they're programmed to do that and so it's important for you to set limits and set boundaries on how much you're doing and how much you're giving remember there should be an equal exchange we should be operating in the law of transference if not then what we put out there we have to consider it to be a gift which means that we don't expect anything back from it right but again we have to ask ourselves am i over gifting am i doing a little bit too much they were also saying something about your right hand man when i sat down to do your reading um the camera always focuses on my face but when I did it today, it actually focused in another area right here on my right hand side and I felt a presence there. So there is this idea of like your guides or your ancestors or your gods or whatever it is that you resonate with Pisces um, acting as your right hand man to help you kind of deprogram any sense of unworthiness that you have and really kind of a reinforce your backbone is what i'm hearing so that way you can stand up for yourself that way you can change your prices they're wanting to bring up something specific right now about a lot of you guys and your spiritual giftings a lot of you guys whether or not you're professional working psychics or readers or healers a lot of you are that character in the lives of other people and some of you may be <clears throat> You're very generous with your spiritual gifts and your talents, whatever those may be. But there is this impression that there are people around you that take advantage of your spiritual gifts. So this would be friends who only hit you up when they want a reading or like they make plans with you, but then just remind you to bring your cards. It's those type of situations, which can be really frustrating, especially if you're not like a working, a professional reader or a healer or a psychic or anything like that. It's exciting that people like are validating your skills and they want you to do a reading and you like to do these healings and you like to do that stuff but just be really mindful of people that are using or taking advantage of your spiritual abilities for their own benefit without also offering to compensate you for it or exchange something or even just spend time with you without psychic work does that make sense um it's important for you to kind of just keep that in mind and your guys your ancestors, whatever you kind of have in your team, they're going to start being a lot more vocal with you as this right hand man type of energy. And so they may kind of cut you off or they may tell you to for accidentally forget your cards or when you feel a little bit nervous about speaking up, they might come and like push on you, tap on you a little bit and say, no, 
speak up no raise your prices no tell them that you can't come no put the boundary you're off today office hours whatever it is it feels like that guidance is going to start coming in a lot more forcefully they might actually feel like a little bit pushy but it is for your own good because you do need a little bit of like a cheerleader a support staff to help reinforce these new habits right until they become routine so a couple of cards that had come out for you is one this card lost lands which I think is interesting. Soul memories and gifts. You've done this before, which tells me that one, just in terms of the law of exchange and over giving that like you've been in situations before Pisces where you were giving and giving and doing and doing and people weren't even meeting you halfway. And I have a sneaking suspicion that a lot of those situations or relationships disintegrated because a day came where enough was enough and you finally snapped. The idea here is because you've been through these situations before, you usually know how they end, that we can actually make like a much more harmonious um, ending or solution to these by dealing with the issue before it becomes explosive for you. Lost Lands as well also gives me the impression that now is a really good time for you to reclaim lost territory or to make up for ground that was lost or missed. It feels like, because there's this idea, it feels very Ten of Wands, that there's there's progress that you want to be making, but there's so much pressure for you to keep up with other people's expectation of your own over-giving or your own over-gifting. It's as if you set this standard of, this is what Pisces does, this is the normal amount of giving for Pisces, not realizing that it's actually much more than you should be doing. So the idea of dropping it or saying no might make you feel like you're disappointing people. The idea here is that in order to make up for this lost ground or this lost progress that, you know, was missed by you, like taking on everyone else's stuff and doing too much and not advocating for like where you really should be or how you really should be compensated, the way that we regain that is by allowing the universe to start moving pieces around for you. This is gonna, this is asking you to release a little bit of control on what happens in the exterior world so that way you can gain a greater sense of control and mastery in your own interior world. Because the next card is my will um, to thy will, breath of the cosmos, micromanaging the universe. In order for you to reclaim a lot of this energy, set new standards for yourself, re-examine your boundaries, and really start to concretely affirm your own worth and the value and who you are as a person and what you put out there into the world. There are going to have to be pieces around you. There are going to be some people that are going to have to get shifted around. And one, that's a process that will naturally happen as you start treating yourself and expecting a kind of a different level of value and appreciation from others but the universe seemingly wants to come in and start shifting these puzzle pieces around so you actually have the room in which to grow right if we're regaining lost territory that's an expansion we can't expand if there are things in the way which means that you have to kind of let god or the universe your ancestors drive the car for a little bit so that way you can refocus your energy on your internal process right now because this aspect of personal development is much more important than the people or the things around you that drop off does that make sense and i actually think because i'm sorry comes up next writing past wrongs and when i look at these two people they're mirror reflections of the same one right but it looks like they're on like two different pieces of land there's this realization that i feel like is coming through where you're recognizing that this upgrade, this shift, this new sense of self-worth, right, which all has to do with like the promotion, the elevation that you've been working for in your life, has actually been trying to come in for a very long time. The universe has been trying to shift these pieces and like show you that this has been an issue, but it feels like you maybe didn't want to look at it for a period of time. Like you did not want to look at it or like you didn't really agree and you were holding on to these pieces waiting for them to mirror back to you your worth and when they didn't you might have gotten like really frustrated by it so it feels like in retrospect you're realizing wait a second god the universe my answer they've been trying to talk to me about this a long time 
I can actually look back and see that time there and that time there when they were pushing me to do what I'm doing now, when they were trying to move pieces and I wouldn't let them. Uh, it's like, I'm sorry. I recognize that maybe you weren't trying to get in my way, but that you were trying to do something for me and not against me. And I was actually the thing in my own way. Holy shit. I'm sorry. It almost feels like Page of Cups energy when the page has this little goblet and he's kind of like pointing it up to the universe and it's like, cheers, like I get it. Like I finally see what you're doing. It's me. I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> you know? It's like I think we all have those moments, Pisces. Um ooh. But better late than never. That's what I say. That's what I say, my love. So this this is what I have for you right now. I'm gonna leave this here because I think we're in um like a pretty good space for you. I am gonna go do an extended reading. There's a few more cards I kind of want to pull, and I definitely want to look at this oracle of the mystical moment. So if you're interested in your extended reading, you can check out Vimeo or Patreon. If you are looking for your monthly reading for January, again, you could check out Vimeo or Patreon. Those links are going to be right down below for you. I do offer personal readings. So if you'd like a little one-on-one -on -one help, you can book with me through my website. I love you very much. Thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit all the little buttons down below, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.